We're back, and before introducing our next guest, I want to reference a spot that we just played during commercial break featuring Jessica Hardy. This spot has been on our show for months. It's a wonderful uh, spot uh, focusing on water conservation, and Jessica was good enough to work with the water department in bringing it to you. We're now joined by another Olympian, uh, legendary Kathy Hetty Drum. Welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Kathy won four gold medals in the 1975 Pan American Games, made the 1976 Olympic team, competed in the 400 meter freestyle, finishing fifth, and was voted the United States Olympic Committee's Athlete of the Year in 1975. Uh, Thank you awesome. very much. Awesome. Welcome to our show. Appreciate what it. What does it mean, Kathy, to athletes to have this kind of organization uh, at their back? Well, as an athlete, and having swimming and the city behind you uh, means an awful lot. It's um, all the aquatic sports. It's a lot of hard work to get to be an elite athlete. The focus and determination that you have to have starting from a very young age is very difficult. It may look easy. And just having the people support you behind you means a lot when you go to an event. You want to represent the city, you want to represent your family, and you want to represent um, your club and your coaches. And to have that city behind you just means an awful lot and gives you a lot more excitement and determination to do well. Drew, as a board member of the foundation, you have the opportunity to meet athletes like Kathy, who herself is on the board. Uh, Jessica Hardy, who we referenced and was the Athlete of the Year. Uh, it must be inspiring to you as uh, community leaders to interact with these young athletes. It's very inspiring. I actually come from a water polo swimming background, so in the development of the Aquatic Capital of America Foundation, to meet Kathy, to meet Susie Atwood, to know the Azevedo family, um, the good thing about being in Long Beach and being in the Aquatic Capital of America is there's Olympians on every corner. And I don't say that um, out of line. There, there's just a lot of Olympians in Long Beach, and they're doing their thing, and I think they need an organization like us that has some influence and has some horsepower to help them out. And when I heard uh, athletes of the ilk of uh, Misty May and Jessica Hardy say that, that having the support of the city and the community really inspired them, uh, I was struck by that. Yeah, it really is so important to have your city behind you and knowing that your city is doing everything that it possibly can to help you get to your, to your goals and reach your goals. It just gives you that added edge that you really need. And that's why we have so many Olympians from Long Beach. Fascinating. Drew, uh, Long Beach does have this sense of community about it. And you can live in New York or Chicago and L.A. And, and, and they're wonderful cities, but there isn't that same personal touch that we seem to have here. There's so much going on in every one of those cities. That, but, but here, this is so big, and uh, it has an impact on the athletes. Well, and, and it really helped us when we formed the Aquatic Capital of America Foundation. You don't have to look any farther than, say, one of our board members, Dick Miller, from the Miller family, um, founded the lifeguard department. Dick's been a coach for most of his career here in Long Beach. And, and names like that go on and on and on. So although we're the seventh largest city in the state of California and perhaps the 32nd largest in, in the country, I think our aquatic community not only is the biggest, but the most close-knit. What an inspired idea to, to brand our city as the aqua aquatic capital of America. Such a positive, wholesome, healthy image. And Kathy, I'm, I'm always in awe of, we've had the privilege of meeting a few other Olympians mm -hmm. on the show over the years. And just give our viewers a sense of the dedication and focus it takes for any athlete in any sport to rise to, the, to Olympic levels. Well, in my case, in swimming, um, I was swimming an average of five hours a day. Ah, five over, hours a day. Five hours a day, intensely swimming. Um, I swam about 10 miles a day, and just to do that every day, day in and day out, se almost seven days a week as a youngster and growing up um, was a lot of intensity and a lot of working out and a lot of focus. You have to focus. You have to focus. Yeah, you and you, you sacrifice a lot, don't you? All the other things you could be doing in those five hours. Yes, a day. I didn't make my senior high school graduation, and I didn't make the senior prom. But I wanted to be in the Olympic trials. The Olympic trials, in fact, was in Long Beach in my case, and I made the Olympic tier here in Long Beach at Belmont Plaza Olympic Pool. 
And, and you know you do it because uh, you want to, to reach that goal and you do it because you know that others are doing it and if you don't do it, they'll be spending more time than you. Exactly. If you're not in the pool that day, someone else is. And you recognize that as an early age and you just have that insight in yourself that you want to be an Olympian. I love that. If you're not in the pool, someone else is. Uh, and, and that must be useful training in life generally, focus on goals. You would think so. I mean, most of us are competitively oriented, and um, I think you've got to be aware of what your competition's doing. And to that point, that's why we took the name Long Beach, the aquatic capital of America, because we know other cities would like to claim that moniker as well. Let me ask you, Kathy, did the lessons you learned to become an Olympian serve you well in other aspects of your life? Absolutely. Being an Olympian has taught me so much in my life is to keep going when you have upsets or things don't go work out your way. You keep fighting back and you'll be back on your feet. And I really think that's helped me throughout a lot of things that have come up. And I just think that um, being an Olympian, you always have that behind you and, and uh, knowing that you've done what you've done, even when it was, I was 18 years old and to do what I did, it's just, it's just means a lot to me. Absolutely. Drew, uh, what would you like to say to our viewers who might want to get involved or be supportive of these activities? Well, I think, and, and being on your show today has been very helpful, I think we just need to raise an awareness, and I would say to the residents, when you hear about the Aquatic Capital of America Foundation or when you see events that, that we're putting together, try to come out and support us. You don't need to necessarily be an Olympian and you don't need to be an aquatic person to, to back us and support us and then subsequently back and support these athletes. It's a good thing. I know we have a temporary pool in the Belmont Shore area, but the city has authorized a brand new pool uh, with Olympic uh, quality uh, heights for diving and, and, and lanes for swimming. And uh, we'll be meeting with uh, Councilman DeLong in the next segment, but that's an important uh, step forward, is it not? Well, it's very important. I mean, the Belmont Plaza pool is iconic in aquatics across the country, if not the world. I like to say, so far so good, and I think Council Member DeLong would agree with that. The city has stepped up, they've done what they said they were gonna do, and um, we just anxiously await the finished product. Well said. Well, uh, uh, Kathy, uh, we're gonna say goodbye to you and also Thank goodbye you. to Drew, and in the next segment, we'll be joined by Councilman DeLong and Tom Shadden will be returning. Stay with us, we'll be back with more of our show after these messages. How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee, freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Belfar, Long Beach. Who needs this modern world? I can live just fine out here without the road rage and boy bands. Of course, I might miss my charter HD with football on ESPN and Walking Dead on AMC. ESPN and AMC. And, well, Shark Week on Discovery HD, but that's all. AMC, ESPN, Discovery, TBS, and Comedy Central HD, but that's it. Except for HBO HD. Charter now has over 100 HD channels and more brilliant HD shows on demand than ever. Shows on demand.